Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen. We regroup for the second part of our unit 2. In this session, we will continue to explore the foundations and the environment of production and operations management. Our agenda for this session is nature and significance of mission for a business, factors that impact on the development of company mission, company mission and its role in operations management, development of mission for operations management critical areas, corporate strategy and operations management. Now I will request Sir Abbas to advance our understandings on the development of corporate mission and its relationship with the operations management. Well, thank you Aisha. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll recall until now, we have been discussing primarily more macro level issues as far as uh, a company is concerned. Although mission and strategy is also a macro level uh, issue, but that relates more to the internal uh, environment of the corporation. And this session, we will basically uh, uh, devote to discuss what actually mission is, what actually strategy is, how they are related to each other, how the internal environment is affected and how the operations management is affected by the internal thinking of a corporation. I think it's better if we start by looking at what actually mission is and what actually strategy is and how they are related to each other. Mission, uh, as if we uh, try to define mission, is company's purpose of being. It is a statement that tells an organization where it is going. And strategy tells the organization how to get there. Means one is purpose of being, other is how to reach that goal. Now, what is the significance of mission? I think unless and until a company knows what actually the company wants, what is the company's purpose of being? What is the company, why that company exists? Why that company was created? And so on, it is important and that is captured in company's mission. Uh, that answer, what do we provide to the society? That is the mission. Then establish the boundaries and focus. Means mission is not a very open-ended sort of statement. It tells the company, it defines the boundaries of the company. That means what can and what cannot be done. Now, uh, we'll, we'll go through some company missions, two or three or four uh, company missions we'll read through, and we'll find then what is the common bond between the mission of a company. For example, Federal Express, I'm sure uh, you are familiar, ladies and gentlemen, across, uh, uh, across the Commonwealth of uh, Online Learning, FedEx is active. And FedEx uh, mission statement says, is committed to our people service profit philosophy. We will produce outstanding financial returns by providing totally reliable, competitively superior, global air ground transportation of high priority goods. High priority goods. And document that required rapid time certain delivery. Equally important positive control of each package will be maintained using real-time electronic tracking and tracing system. 
a complete record of each shipment and delivery will be presented with our request for payment. We will be helpful, courteous, and professional to each other and the public. We will strive to have a completely satisfied customer at the end of each transaction. Okay, in this uh, mission statement of FedEx, three things are very important. A, society. B, is basically the profit. C, is the customer. Customer is the key. Then, uh, service is essentially, and people basically is the people of the company. Service is service to the customer. Profit is profit to the shareholder. These are three fundamental, uh, uh, what they call philosophy of Federal Express. Now let, let us look at entirely a different company. Uh, Merck, we all know, is a pharmaceutical company. And Merck's mission states, the mission of Merck is to provide society with superior products and services innovation solutions that improve the quality of life and satisfy customer needs, to provide employees with meaningful work and advancement opportunities, and investors with a superior rate of return. Again, three things, satisfied customers, happy employees, and rate of return to the shareholders. Now, Hard Rock Cafe, which is an entertainment or fine dining, again, let's look at their driving delivering the exceptional entertainment and dining experience. To whom? To your customers. We are committed to being an important contributing member to our community and offering a Hard Rock family. Hard Rock family kya hai? Hard Rock family is the employees of Hard Rock, uh, a fun, healthy and nurturing work environment, right? While ensuring our long-term success. Again, three things important. Customer, Aapke, your, your, your stakeholders or shareholders and your employees. In this mission statement, again, that is common with the FedEx, common with Merck. Now, let's look at the uh, mission statement of Arnold Palmer Hospital. Is a healing environment providing family-centered care with compassion, comfort, and respect when it matters the most. Now, uh, we've seen in each of the mission statement we looked at, gives us three things. Your customer is the king. Customer and service is at the core of your mission statement. You have to, in order to be a profitable company, in order to be a good company, you have to take customer at the center. Second is employees, satisfied employees, happy employees who can provide the service to the customers and that will yield a superior rate of return to the shareholder. That is what actually a mission statement should have. Sir, I'm sure company mission is considered at strategic level by the top management. However, we would like to know what contributes to the formation of company's mission. Well, Aisha, I think we were discussing uh, three major things. While, uh, I mean, your mission statement must have these three elements, your customer, the concern of the shareholders and your employees. Now, but in order to develop that uh, mission, there are a number of factors which need to be considered by the top management, by the strategic management. And we'll describe that with the uh, help of this diagram. Factors affecting the mission. It starts with the philosophy and value. You recall that Federal X mission, that this is our philosophy. The philosophy and values that corporation stands for. I mean, it starts with that. Then, environment. Means, organization has its environment. It function, it doesn't, organization doesn't function in a vacuum. They function in its environment. The stakeholders, the, the customers, the suppliers, uh, the employees, the regulators, and so on. Environment. Customers. Goes into mission. What actually your customers are? Who your customers are? What are their aspirations? What are their motivations? What are their requirements? Then profitability and growth. Means as a shareholder, let's say if I'm a shareholder of a company, or you are a shareholder of a company, or a, and so on, your profit, your, your, your motive will be that your company gives you a handsome return, right? Then mission statement must incorporate that, profitability and growth, public image. Means no company can survive having a bad image. 
you recall uh, Exxon Valdez case, you recall uh, the, the, the current uh, uh, oil spill of uh, Shell corporations, and you, you, you recall similar many other uh, disasters which created a bad name for the companies and generally the multinationals cannot afford, simply cannot afford to have a bad name. As such, the companies are very sensitive to their public image, that they are good to the society where they function. And I think all these things, philosophy and values, environment, customers, profitability and growth and public image, they all get into the mission statement with the ultimate objective of generating benefit to the society, society where you function. Now, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll discuss starting from the company mission. It is not only the company mission which is critical. It is company mission and then from company in the functional areas, mission of the functional areas. And then from the functional areas, it goes all the way to 10 decision areas which we have been discussing time and again. Uh, it is not only the company mission is there, right? Then functional areas are required to have their own mission. Then operational areas, these 10 decision areas, also ought to have their own mission. I'll give you uh, an example. For example, a simple company mission is to manufacture and service an innovative, growing, and profitable worldwide microwave communications business that exceeds our customers' expectations. It means that is the top level company mission. Now, for the operations management, the simple operations management mission would be to produce products consistent with the company's mission as a worldwide low cost manufacturer. It tells us two things. One, the operations management mission is consistent with the company mission. Second, it is alluding to the worldwide low cost manufacturer, right? That is the operations management. Now, now we look at the 10 critical areas, 10 decision areas which we have been uh, uh, talking about. Now we'll look at the mission of each of these 10 areas and how it varies and how it draws upon its superior mission. For example, the product design. It, uh, the mission will be, product design department's mission will be to design and produce products and services with outstanding quality and inherent customer value. Now, we come to the quality. Quality department's mission would be to attain the exceptional value that is consistent with our company's mission and marketing objectives by close attention to design, procurement, production, and field service operations. Because quality goes across the borders. Quality is not just a, uh, a limited to one department. It, it goes across the organization uh, at all levels and across functions. Process design. Process design department will have uh, a mission like this to determine and design or produce the production process and equipment that will be compatible with low cost product, high quality and good quality of work life at economical cost. That is the process. Now, a simple mission for the locations department. Facilities people will have the mission like this to locate, design and build efficient and economical facilities that will yield high value to the company, its employees and the community. Right? Now, layout design. Layout design is another uh, department or critical decision area. They should have the mission like this to achieve through skill, imagination, and resourcefulness in layout and work methods, production effectiveness and efficiency while supporting the high quality work life. It means research tells us that only layout, if you have a properly designed layout that can impact your productivity, that can enhance your productivity manifold. Now, human resource department will also have a mission statement which says to provide a good quality of work life, it targets to the employees with well-designed, safe, rewarding job, stable employment and equitable pay in exchange for outstanding individual contribution from employees at all levels. Now, supply chain management will have the mission statement like this to collaborate with suppliers to develop innovative products from stable, effective, and efficient sources of supply. Inventory management department will have the mission like this, to achieve low investment in inventory, consistent with high customer service levels and high facility utilization. 
scheduling department will have uh, the mission statement like this to achieve high level of throughput and timely customer delivery through effective scheduling maintenance means you cannot run a facility without maintenance may regular periodic maintenance preventive maintenance is required of any facility and the mission would to achieve high utilization of facilities and equipment by effective preventive maintenance and prompt repair may no matter how good your equipment is it goes bad now you have to correct it you have to repair it the maintenance department's mission must reflect that a preventive maintenance second repair it says like that to achieve high utilization of facilities and equipment by effective preventive maintenance and prompt repair of facilities and equipment it means these are uh, some of the uh, uh, the samples of the mission statements that originates at the company level starts from the company level goes to the operations management your marketing sales finance operations management then operations management deals with 10 decision areas mission statement for each of the 10 decision areas i think that all talks about company's internal environment and must be helping and supporting each other so that is what the company's uh, mission has to do with the company's internal function right so in the beginning we define strategy how is actually it related to the operations management well, i think uh, uh, aisha and ladies and gentlemen uh, strategy as you will recall the definition of strategy is how to get there It means operation management's job is to provide goods and services now how to get the goods and services now in strategic thinking let's look at the strategic uh, formulation of the mission and and so on how strategy is actually formulated and how that strategy helps and is related with the operation management will with the help of this diagram we we originate I mean, the strategic process basically it originates from the organization's mission right then functional areas mission if we replace this functional area mission with operations management mission no we we need not to organization's mission functional areas mission and three functional areas we discussed is marketing operation finance and accounting three operations areas mm. now strategically it flows from the company's mission now now all these missions of the marketing operations and finance accounting they are not stand alone they have to complement each other a they originate they derive inspiration from the company mission and then they complement each other they support each other they help each other in uh, means in mission you need to achieve something let's say if marketing is going to achieve something requires the support of operations requires uh, operations wants to achieve something requires the support of finance and accounting the mission statement at the functional areas and then further in the detail uh, the operational areas is are required to support each other required to complement each other now actually what is strategy strategy is action plan to achieve the mission okay can operations management live without it certainly not functional areas have strategies as i mentioned and strategies exploit now this is very critical statement strategies exploit opportunities and strengths neutralize threats and avoid weaknesses i'm sure you are familiar with the swot thing strength weaknesses weaknesses no, swot strength weaknesses opportunities and, and threats. threats and i think in the strategy formulation swot analysis is also performed we were discussing that it is exceptionally important for the corporation while we are developing a strategy to look at to pre- to perform the swot analysis strengths weaknesses opportunities and threat analysis why do we do that there is a reason means companies don't do anything without any cause or without any reason and that reason is competitive advantage right we'll discuss two or three strategies that provide a competitive advantage to a company for example uh, as we discussed the strategy development process requires swot analysis strengths weaknesses opportunities and threat analysis i'll describe a uh, few top level strategies for example when we call uh, differentiation 
as a competitive strategy. I mean, you know, uh, why the companies perform, why the companies are in business. They are in business to compete, to serve the market and uh, serve the market better than competition. As such, companies adopt a particular strategy, develop a particular strategy. For example, differentiation is a strategy. Uh, what does differentiation mean? To be better or at least different. Means, let's say company A produces uh, air conditioner, company B produces air conditioners. Now, differentiation strategy would require that company A or company B differentiates its product or service from its competitor. Similarly, cost leadership is another competitive strategy. Response means to be responsive to customer needs, customer calls for service or for the supply and so on is another strategy. So these are some of the top level strategy, strategies which the corporations really use to be competitive and outsmart their uh, competition. Sir, would you give us some examples of differentiation, cost and response strategies? Uh, sure, Aisha. Uh, I mean, there will be a ton of examples uh, for uh, differentiation, cost leadership or uh, for uh, uh, response. Uh, for example, uh, when we want to compete on differentiation strategy, uh, what is that? It is actually the uniqueness can go beyond both the physical characteristics and service attributes to encompass everything that impacts customers' perception of the value. It means company, when you talk IBM, when you talk Compaq, when you talk, uh, let's say, uh, uh, Sony, or the customer has an image of that product, image of that company. It is not necessary that only product is the uh, image. The companies differentiate in its totality from its competition. I'll give you an example. Safe Skin Gloves, leading edge products because of its quality. Walt Disney Magic Kingdom, experience differentiation. Means there is none other theme park like Walt Disney. There will be I mean, hundreds of theme parks, but Magic Kingdom is entirely different than a big lot of theme parks. Similarly, Hard Rock Cafe, the dining experience. There are virtually thousands of dining places, but Hard Rock as a brand name, the customer, when, when, when you talk Hard Rock, the people have a specific image of that company, right? It means fine dining experience. The objective here is that companies differentiate themselves by their overall total image of their product, of their service, and so on uh, from the competition. Now, now let, let's look at uh, competing on cost. Uh, if a company wants to compete on cost, it provides the maximum value as perceived by the customer, does not employ low quality. Now, that, that's very critical. It means when you say uh, we are a low cost company or we are a low cost airline, that does not mean that uh, your, your quality of your product or service is low. No, that is not true. Quality, comparable quality, low cost at a comparable quality with the competition. If a company uses quality, uh, cost as a leverage or cost as a competitive strategy, uh, for example, I'll give you an example of uh, Southwest Airline is I mean, it's a low-cost airline. People know it. They, how, how do they compete? So they use secondary airports, no frill service, efficient utilization of equipment. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss this in a greater detail at uh, Walmart. Small overheads, shrinkage, and distribution cost less. Similarly, France uh, Colliard, which is also another uh, uh, general store, chain of general stores, no bags, low light, no music, doors on freezers, and so on means the companies, these companies, big companies, big time company, Walmart is a big time uh, American giant, Southwest Airline is a big time uh, airline, and so, so is the France Corriard. means these companies adopted without compromising their quality, comparable quality with their competition as low cost providers of goods and services. Similarly, competing on response, flexibility. We look at Hillard Packard. Hillard Packard is used all over the world, right? I mean, it means uh, we have uh, 220, in America it is 110. But still, we use Hillard, Hillard Packard uh, printers, and so does Americans, and so does the European, and so on. 
institutionalization of the Hilliard packet, flexibility in the operation, reliability. The, for example, Germany machine industry is famous for its, its reliability. The timeliness is quickness in design, production, and delivery. Johnson Electric's, Benningham's, Motorola means these are the flexibility, reliability, timeliness. These are the strategies for the companies who compete uh, for on the response as a major strategy. Sir, how the strategy is related to the 10 operations decision areas? Well, I shall describe that with the help of this example. Look at this diagram. We have these operational decisions, product, quality, process, location, layout, these 10 areas. Examples are, for example, Sony's example, Sony's constant innovation of new products, flexibility in design volume, the Hillard Packard's ability to lead the printer market, flexibility in volume, right? Southwest Airline, no fill services, that is the low cost strategy. Pizza Hut, Federal Express, they use delivery speed and dependability. Motorola's HDTV converters, Motorola pagers, they conformance and performance, they compete on quality. Caterpillar, after sale service on heavy equipment, again after sale service. Then Fidelity security board line, uh, Fidelity's uh, securities uh, broad line of mutual funds, that's broad product line. Means these are the specific strategies, flexibility, low cost, delivery, quality, after sale service, and ultimately competitive advantages by be to be different, to be faster, or to be cheaper. So these are how these 10 operations decisions lead to the company towards the competitive strategy. Sir, can you explain how the competitors compete with each other yet using a different strategy? Uh, yes. I think uh, let's, let's explain that with the help of an example. The two companies who are in the same business, yet they compete on a different turf. Means they compete on the same turf, but with using different strategy. Now let's look at uh, this uh, table. Here, two drug companies or pharmaceutical companies, drug should not be, we should call it pharmaceutical companies. Drug is basically medicine. Mm. Uh, it leads to uh, not controlled substance. <laughs> Uh, this leads to, uh, for example, a branded a company, let's say it is Pfizer or it is some uh, Merck or some big, big time company, and generic drug company. Now, the, the, the brand drug companies uses product differentiation as strategy. And this generic drug use low cost as a strategy. Now, in all the operational areas, for example, product selection and design, the, the product differentiation company would use heavy R&D investment extensive labs focus on development in broad range of drug categories whereas a generic drug company will be low R&D investment focus on development of generic drugs in terms of quality brand will use major priority exceeds regulatory requirements whereas the uh, the generic drug company would use meet a regulatory, re regulatory requirement on country by country basis right now similarly Process, location, one uses product differentiation, other use low cost. Similarly, scheduling, layout, one uses different uh, di product differentiation as a strategy, other uses low cost as strategy. Human resources, supply chain, inventory, maintenance. You see how two different companies, uh, two companies in the same business, but using different strategy Strategies. to compete. So this is uh, actually how they do it. Right. Sir, it seems every firm would be interested to develop superior strategy. However, few succeed. Would you explain why some firms are more successful than the others? Yes. Aisha, it's, it's very, uh, uh, very important to understand what are, the, what are the components of success. At least what should go in to expect that company succeeds. For example, research about effective operations management strategies is must. Understand the preconditions for developing effective OM strategies to compete and understand the dynamics of OM strategy for development. And critical uh, characteristics of successful companies are 
high product quality, high capacity utilization, high operating efficiency, low investment intensity, and low direct cost per unit. Means these are the things that go into uh, building an effective strategy and effective operations to be successful. Thank you, sir, for explaining to us mission, strategy, and how mission and strategy is related, how they are developed, and how these two critical terms help companies gain competitive advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, we conclude. It is important to have a company mission and mission for companies functional areas and mission for the 10 critical operations management areas. Company mission, functional areas, mission and 10 critical operations management areas should support each other, complement each other. Strategy must be well thought, well analyzed, well documented and carefully implemented to gain competitive advantage. With that, thank you all for being with us. See you in the next episode of Production and Operations Management. Thank you and Allah Hafiz.